So, all right. Welcome to our first night of VBS. This is completely new for most of us. You guys that are here, that are able to be here, um, it'll be probably pretty much the same for you guys for the most part. Um, but for the rest of us, and there'll be some things you'll notice that'll be a little bit different. Um, but we're going to just try this out. We're going to give it a shot. We're going to see how well this goes. And hopefully things actually work the way they're supposed to. That never happens, right? So we'll just have to see how this goes. All right. So who's ready? Who's excited about tonight? All right. We're, we are doing, as you can see, Kingdom Chronicles medieval theme. I am super pumped about this week. I am super excited about it. This is like one of my favorite things to work on, favorite things to do. We're going to be having a lot of fun. I am, you're definitely going to see some swords this week because um, I love any excuse to get my swords out and bring them and, and swing them around. So we are definitely going to have some of that later. But right now, we're going to start by singing some songs. So everybody stand up. And we are going to start out by singing Lord's Army. So in order to sing Lord's Army, you first have to get your gear on. So everybody put your army hats on. All right, and your army boots. And because it's medieval week, put your army sword on. And your army gun. And stand up at attention. And we're going to sing Lord's Army. All right, here we go. I may never march in the infantry, ride in the cavalry, shoot the artillery. I may never fly o'er the enemy, but I'm in the Lord's Army. Yes, sir. I'm in the Lord's Army. Yes, sir. I'm in the Lord's Army. Yes, sir. I may never march in the infantry, ride in the cavalry, shoot the artillery. I may never fly o'er the enemy, but I'm in the Lord's Army. Yes, sir. All right, take off your army hats and throw them at Miss Shelby. And take off your army boots and throw them at Brother John. And take off your guns and your swords and lay them at your side because those are dangerous to throw. All right, put on your cowboy hats and your cowboy boots and your shooting pistols and your lasso. And everybody stand bow-legged. All right, and for this one, y'all got to talk in a southern draw like Miss Tanya. All right, so here we go. I may never march in the infantry, ride in the cavalry, shoot the artillery. I may never lasso the enemy, but I'm in the Lord's army. Yeehaw! I'm in the Lord's army. Yeehaw! I'm in the Lord's army. Yeehaw! I may never march in the infantry, ride in the cavalry, shoot the artillery. I may never lasso the enemy, but I'm in the Lord's army. Yeehaw! All right, take off your cowboy hats, and everybody throw them at Miss Carson. And take off your cowboy boots, and everybody throw them at Brother Ed. And take off your lassos, and get them going. Get him going fast. Get him going really fast. And everybody lasso Nathan. All right, take off your shooting pistols. Blow them off. And lay those at your side because those are dangerous to throw. All right, put on your sombreros. And your sandals. Grab a cheesy taco. And a donkey. And we're going to sing in Mexican style. Here we go. I may never take a nap in Mexico, wear a big sombrero, ride a donkey oh so slow. I may never eat a cheesy taco, but I'm in the Lord's army. Si, senor. I'm in the Lord's army. Si, senor. I'm in the Lord's army. Si, senor. I may never take a nap in Mexico, wear a big sombrero, ride a donkey oh so slow. I may never eat a cheesy taco, but I'm in the Lord's army. Si, senor. All right, take off your sombreros and throw them at Miss Jennifer. And take off your sandals and throw them at Preacher. 
and take your cheesy taco and stuff it in someone else's face. And take your donkey and let him loose. All right, good job. All right. All right, we're going to sing the next song. Everybody clap in. And we're going to sing Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I got him on my mind. Ready? Jesus, 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 I got him on my mind. Jesus, 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 I got him on my mind. Jesus, 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 I got him on my mind. Hey, I've got Jesus on my mind. When I come to church, when I come to church, I got him on my mind. When I come to church, I got him on my mind. When I come to church, I got him on my mind. Hey, I've got Jesus on my mind. When I read my Bible, when I read my Bible, I got him on my mind. When I read my Bible, I got him on my mind. When I read my Bible, I got him on my mind. Hey, I've got Jesus on my mind. All right, keep clapping, keep clapping. Sam, when you got Jesus on your mind. What? Well, uh, when I'm in the shower. All right, here we go. Uh, when I'm in the shower, I got him on my mind. Uh, when I'm in the shower, I got him on my mind. Uh, when I'm in the shower, I got him on my mind. Hey, I've got Jesus on my mind. Don't laugh at him too much because I might come to you next. All right, Blake, when you got Jesus on your mind? When you see me skipping. When you see me skipping, I got him on my mind. When you see me skipping, I got him on my mind. You got to do it. When you see me skipping, I got him on my mind. Hey, I've got Jesus on my mind. All right, one more, one more. Dylan, when you got Jesus on your mind? When I'm what? When I brush my teeth. When I brush my teeth, I got him on my mind. When I brush my teeth, I got them on my mind. When I brush my teeth, I got them on my mind. Hey, I've got Jesus on my mind. All right, good job. You may have a seat. You may have a seat. All right. Great. Trying to stick to my own schedule here. And I should have worn a watch instead of trying to see that clock back there. All right. All right, here we go. So, thank you all for being here tonight. Um, did everyone in here get a bag? Everyone here get a bag? Good deal, good deal. All right. For those of you watching, if you did not get a bag beforehand, um, we will still have the bags here all week. If you would like to come get them, they'll have the crafts, they'll have some snack stuff in there. For those of you who want to participate virtually, um, I have no idea. I've never, not even looked, so um, hopefully, maybe we've got somebody um, watching tonight. So if not, hey, we're going to have fun anyway. We're going to have a good time. All right, we are going to sing one more song, and then the teens are going to head over to their stuff, and we're going to start doing some more stuff right here. All right, so. Stop. All right, we are going to sing Jesus' love is a bubbling over. All right, here we go. Jesus' love is a bubbling over. Jesus' love is a bubbling over. Jesus' love is a bubbling over. Hallelujah. Mm. Love is a bubbling over. Mm. Love is a bubbling over. Mm. Love is a bubbling over. Hallelujah. Mm. Ah, bubbling over. Mm. Ah, bubbling over. Mm. Ah. Bubbling over, hallelujah. Mm, ah, whoosh, over, mm, ah, whoosh, over, mm, ah, whoosh, over, hallelujah. Mm, ah, whoosh, woo, mm, ah, whoosh, woo, mm, ah, whoosh, woo, hallelujah. Jesus' love is a bubbling over. Jesus' love is a bubbling over. Jesus' love is a bubbling over. Hallelujah. All right, great job, teens. You may go ahead and be dismissed. We'll see you again at the end of the night. Maybe, if any of you survive. Only Brother Aaron knows. <laughs> no. All right, so we are going to be doing things a little bit differently this year. I'm, going to, I'm saying this for you guys. If you're watching virtually, it's all new for you. Um, and hopefully you guys can all enjoy it. Hopefully we're going to have a good time with this. 
Anneli. Sit, turn around. All right. So we are going to be going right into our lesson time right now. Usually right now we'd go ahead and break up and you'd be going out all over the place and all in different classrooms. Um, but we are going to go ahead and go right into our lesson time right now with everybody right here together. So, yes, it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to it because... We can do a puppet show! No, that's at the end. <laughs> I might need you to kick these mics off just because my kids are in the front row. <laughs> okay. All right, but we are going to go ahead and go right into our lesson. So I have some rules whenever I've got my lesson time. We're going to go over our rules right now. So you say what I say. You say louder. You say louder. Rule number one. Rule number one. Sit, up. Sit up. This means, this means your bottom's in your seat, your bottom's in your seat. and your back, your back is straight. Rule number two. Rule number two. Hush, up. Hush up. This does not mean, does not mean that you cannot talk. But it does mean you cannot talk when I am talking. Rule number three, keep your hands and your feet to yourself. So no kicking, no punching, no throwing Maverick out the room. To yourself. And rule number four, look, you're getting quiet on me, this way. Not that way or that way. Or that, or that way, this way. All right, great job. So, those are our four rules. And we do have two people watching. Tonight, we are going to have Miss Tanya and Miss Carson both watching during the lesson time. And they will each pick one person at the end of the lesson before we move on to our rotations to receive some sort of prize. I've got some stuff up here I can use. So. Yeah, I can use that stuff. What's that? Okay, and we got some more stuff uh, elsewhere. But <clears throat> I'll use that stuff tonight. So, all right. So, sitting up, hushing up, keep your hands and feet yourselves, looking this way. I need to go grab some stuff. All right. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> stuff, yes. This is my stuff box. All right. So, as you may have noticed, we will be talking about the Middle Ages this week. We're going to be talking about kings and queens and knights, mostly knights because they're the cool ones, right? Everyone wants, all right, let me just have different place on the planet. Same time period, wrong location. All right, so let's just, I'm going to ask right here, how many of you have ever pretended to be a knight? All right, the majority. Why is your hand not up? I know you have. All right. Most everyone in here has pretended to be a knight at some point. But, so we're going to find out some different things about knights tonight. We're going to find out some, starting tonight, all week, we're going to be finding out some different things about knights. So, talking about pretending to be knights. I was working out in my garden last week, and I saw one of my kids, who shall remain nameless, um, pretending something over in the side yard and I had no idea like I could not figure out what it was they were doing usually I can watch them and figure out kind of what it is that's going on what they're doing and I could not figure it out so I called them over and I said hey what are, you, what are you doing what are you pretending because I could tell they were pretending something and they said well I was in a battle but I got injured and I had to go to the hospital and while I was at the hospital, I got better. They chopped my arm off, but I got a new arm. And I'm on my way back to the battle now. And I was putting my battle clothes back on just in case the battle's still going. I said, oh, really? She's like, yeah. They're, they're like, yeah. I've got, I want to make sure I've still got my battle clothes on so I'm ready for the battle in case the battle's still going when I get there. And they ran off. And for just a moment, I, was, I just sat there and thought about that for just a moment. Do we have our battle clothes on? Because whether you realize it or not, and we've got a pretty young group here tonight, there is a very real battle going on right now. A battle between good and evil. 
I know that sounds like a story. I mean, it sounds like a fairy tale. It sounds like something that can't be real because it's a very real battle between good and evil. And we're going to talk about that tonight. We're going to talk tonight basically about how that battle began. But first, we're going to talk a little bit about those battle clothes. And every night we're going to be talking a little bit more about some of the battle clothes that God has given us so that we can be ready for the battle. The first thing we're going to talk about actually isn't even something um, that we're going to be looking at later with the rest of the armor. Because the very first thing that you would want to have on is the right color. So, this garment, and I'm probably going to have to move my mic because I bet this is going to get, my mic could get covered up. This garment is called a surcoat. A surcoat, yeah, I know, it sounds kind of funny, doesn't it? And a surcoat is something you would wear to show on the battlefield who you were. I don't have any coat of arms on this surcoat, but you would wear a surcoat on the battlefield to be able to show other people who you were. They would be able to see your surcoat. They'd be able to see the colors that you were wearing and know who you were. We've got coats, they're called coat of arms. And I've got, here we go. We've got things like this all over the room tonight. These are called a coat of arms or heraldry. And heraldry would be something you would have on your shield, you would have it on your armor, you would have it on what you were wearing to show what team you were on. And they can have all kinds of different stuff in here. I mean, we've got lion, or we've got bears, we've got griffins, we've got lions, we've got dragons, um, we've got, what are some other things we've got around here? Eagles, I think there's an eagle down there. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff. All right, real quick, we're going we're gonna to find out. We've got some really big ones on the sides. I want to hear which one of those big ones is your favorite. So we've got a bear, a griffin, a dragon, and a lion, all right? And on the count, on the count of three, everybody's just going to tell me your favorite one. Everybody all at the same time. And we're going to see which one I hear the loudest. All right, so ready? One, two, three. Dragon! That was pretty good. That was pretty, that was, all right, so. I, I know everyone probably heard the one you shouted the loudest, but what I heard the loudest was Griffin. So that's the one, I, I'm dead serious, that's the one that I heard the loudest. So whoever was shouting Griffin, I don't know how many of you there were, whoever was shouting Griffin, you guys were the ones that were the loudest. Good job. You guys can now be Team Griffin. I don't even know who you are, but you can call yourselves Team Griffin. All right. So, if you have your Bibles, I want you to open your Bibles to Genesis chapter 1. That should be pretty easy to find. Genesis chapter 1. Very first book in the Bible. Very first chapter in the Bible. Genesis chapter 1. So, thousands of years ago, and it would, not as long ago as some people would, let, would want you to believe... God created the heavens and the earth. The Bible says there in verse 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And all throughout chapter 1, we see God creating different things. We see him creating on how many days? Let's see how many of you can remember. How many days did it take God to create everything? Four. Not six. six days. There we go. He created everything in six days. And what did he do on day seven? He rested. Good. So in six days, God created everything, and on the seventh day, he rested. All right, actually, I want you to take your Bibles, turn over to chapter 3, all right? So you're still in Genesis, turn over to chapter 3, if you've got them. I'm setting stuff on the floor in my own way. I'm going to end up tripping before the night's over. It's going to be great. All right. So, we're going to start this out long ago, in a time very far away, when dragons roamed the earth, there was a beautiful paradise. And in that paradise, there only lived two people. And those two people lived in perfect harmony with all of the creatures, with all the animals, with everything that was there, including the dragons. Can you imagine one morning hearing what sounds like a fight going on. And you walk out of your house 
and rolling around and fighting over in the field over next to you are two dragons just going at it. And you're like, you know what? That sounds, that looks like fun. And maybe you're Adam and you run over and you decide you're going to get into the wrestling match with the dragon just for the fun of it. And you could do that because dragons weren't mean. Dragons weren't nasty. Dragons weren't eating people. The Bible talks about not necessarily what we would call dinosaurs. The Bible talks about dragons. The Bible talks about creatures that we would refer to as dragons that nowadays would probably be referred to just as dinosaurs. So we know that the dinosaurs, dragons, really did exist. They really did exist at the same time as Adam and Eve. Wouldn't that be cool? All right, how many of you would think it would be absolutely amazing to get to live in the Garden of Eden? How many of you, I, I would think, I mean, that would be, uh, how, yeah, pet dragon. That'd be super cool. So that would be super fun. And they were there, and it was an amazing, amazing place that they got to live. And God gave them one rule. What was the one rule God gave them? Right. You're not allowed to eat the fruit of the, good, the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. This one tree. He said, you can eat of everything else in the entire garden. Everything else is yours. Everything else is yours to use, yours to eat, yours to take care of. This one tree. Don't eat of this tree. Shh. Don't eat of this one tree. How many of you would like that if your parents only had one rule at your house? <laughs> there was some size that went happen there. All right. I mean, I remember when I was a kid, I would have loved if my parents only had one rule for me to follow at the house. But I guarantee you, even if your parents only had one rule, you would still break it. And that's exactly what Adam and Eve did. Adam and Eve were in the garden one day. And the Bible says that a serpent, which was, here, let's just look in, in uh, chapter 3, verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God knoweth in the day thereof, <clears throat> in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. They begin to have this discussion. The serpent comes to the woman, and they begin to have this discussion about this one rule. And he doesn't bring up the other trees. He doesn't bring up the things that Eve's allowed to do. He doesn't bring up the things that God has said you can do this. He brings up the one thing she's not supposed to do. He says, yea, did God say, hath God said that you can eat of everything in the garden? And they talk about it. And Satan begins to twist God's words. He begins to twist Eve's word. He begins to tell a lie. Because there is only truth and lie. And that's what we're going to be looking at a lot tomorrow night. But right at the very beginning, Satan began by telling a lie. He began by getting Eve to believe a lie. And that's what he still does today. When Satan is coming to tempt you and your flesh is trying to tempt you, when the world is trying to tempt you and get you to do wrong, when the evil side, the bad guys, we'll just call them the bad guys, are trying to get you to do wrong, the first thing they're going to try to do is get you to believe a lie. Whenever your parents have given you a rule, hey, there's something in this closet that I don't want you to see yet. Stay out of this closet. How many of you have ever been told that rule before? How many of you have ever been given a rule, some, something like that? Like, there's something here. I don't want you to see it. Stay out of this area. All right? Some of you have been given that rule before? All right. What's the first thing you want to do when you know your parents' back is turned? You want to open it. You want to go check it out. And the lie that you are tempted to believe is they'll never know. I can look at it, and they'll never know. I can still act surprised whenever it finally comes out. And we, try, and we try to even convince ourselves of that lie. Satan, the world, our flesh, is going to try to get us to believe that lie. The bad guys are going to try to get us to believe that lie, that it's not going to matter, that we can get away with it. Every one of us is born with sin because of what Adam and Eve did. Eve ate of that fruit, she gave it to Adam, and Adam ate of that fruit. 
And from then on, every one of us has been born a sinner. And every one of us now has a choice to which side we're going to be on. Before then, when Adam and Eve were made, when God made Adam and Eve, they were automatically on the good guy's side. They were automatically on God's side. They had never sinned. They had never done anything wrong. They started out on the right team. But now that Adam and Eve have sinned, we have a choice. We have to choose which team we're going to be on because when we are born, when we're born, we're not born onto the good guy's team. Because when we're born, every one of us is born with sin. Every one of us is born a slave. Every one of us is born enslaved, ensnared, already captured by sin. And we have a choice. We can choose to be freed. And we're going to talk more about that choice tomorrow night. If you want to hear more about that choice tonight, you can talk to one of your leaders. But we're not going to talk any more about that tonight. We're going to talk more about that tomorrow night. All right, it is already time to be moving on. So we're going to pray real quick, and then we are going to move on to our, our first rotation of the night. So re- quick recap before we do. There is, a, there is a battle going on, and we have, there are two sides. There's the good guys and the bad guys, and we have a choice to choose which side we are going to be on, and God has given us that choice, and that choice is up to us. And we're going to talk about that choice, like I said, some more tomorrow night. Heads bowed, eyes closed. We're going to go and pray real quick, and then we're going to go ahead and move on to our first rotation. So let's pray. Dear Lord, I thank you for today. I thank you, Lord, for this group of young people that are here. I thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to be able to be doing this live as well and being able to hopefully be reaching out to some others and that they would be enjoying it and receiving a blessing from it. I pray, Lord, that you would help us the rest of this week to continue to be able to serve you, that you would give the teachers, the understanding and the uh, discernment they need to handle any situation that would come up. Help us just to be able to follow you. In your son's name I pray. Amen. All right. So, just a moment. We are going to be moving on to our first through rotation. So, our preschool kindergarten group, you guys here on the front row, you are going to head outside, I believe, for your snack time. So if you would follow Miss Carson and Miss Jennifer, you guys are going to head outside and have your snack time outside, as long as it's not raining. Make sure you go ahead and take your bags with you, take all your stuff with you. They can grab it here and walk out. All right, so Miss Carson, if you just want to take them by the kitchen on your way out. Miss Carson's going to take all your snacks if you don't hurry. All right. Yep. Fourth through sixth grade, you guys are staying put. Actually, move up to the front row. Yes, we are still live, actually. Yep. All right, have a seat. Have a seat. All right, I'm going to go and take this off. Yes. Yes. Yep, that's perfect. Miss Carson, just as a heads up, I have not forgotten about passing out a best behaved. You just keep your eye on it all night, and we'll do that at the end of the night. All right. All right, so we are going to work on learning three songs this week that probably none of you have ever heard before in your entire lives. Are you excited? All right. I'm excited. I think it's going to be a fun time. (laughs) He's excited. All right. So let's see here. Uh, 
sent that. Hmm? He loves to sing, actually. He sings all the time. All right, so let me pull the words up for myself because I'm not going to be able to see those like you guys are. All right, so here's the first one. I'll sing it through first, and that will help you guys get an idea of what's going on. You've got the words up here. We do not have music. We're singing all acapoco, all right? Acapella, for any of you who are willing to catch that. People on the Internet, don't roast me. All right. It's like the whole other element now. All right, are you guys ready? Yeah. All right, so you can sit down for the first part when I'm singing, but whenever you guys get to sing, I want you to stand up, okay? Okay. All right, because I don't know. It's something that it's some weird fact. You always sing better when you're standing up. It just happens that way. I don't know. All right, so here we go. You ready? Are you helping or no? Okay. Do you know this song? I don't even know if you know this song. What's that? <laughs> That's right. All right. So this is Miss Whitney, for any of you who don't know. She's my lovely wife, and she's really good at making it. Um, you're not. You have to be on this mat in order to be on screen. Hi, everybody. <laughs> she's really good at making up hand motions for stuff on the spot. So, <laughs> And I'm not. So definitely good to have her around for that. All right. So here's the song. I'm going to sing it through once. That'll give you a chance to kind of think through hand motions okay. as I'm singing it through one time. Okay. What's that? You should, should hold the baby? Maybe. Since, hand since, hand you're, since you're doing hand motions, I'll hold oh, the baby. Yeah. All right. Do not All touch. In. Do not touch the microphone. All, All right. Here we go. We're going to turn you away from the microphone. All right. Here we go. All right. So the song goes. There is a flag flown high from the castle of my heart, from the castle of my heart, from the castle of my heart. There is a flag flown high from the castle of my heart, for the king is in residence there. So let it high in the sky, let the whole world know, let the whole world know, let the whole world know. So let it fly in the sky, let the whole world know that the king is in residence there. All right, so there's a whole lot of things that get repeated over and over again. Should be pretty easy for you guys to pick up on. <laughs> I know one, so it'll fly in the high. I mean, it's flying in the sky. Let the whole world know. That one works pretty good. All right, I remember that one from whenever I sang this when I was a kid. All right, so we ready? Back at the beginning? Sweet. You're on it. What's that? Start lower. You don't like that one? I'm okay with that. But. He agrees. <laughs> <laughs> you agree with Caleb? All right, here we go. All right, you guys, stand. Let's go ahead and sing this through. All right, here we go. Come on, There is a flag flown high from the castle of my heart, from the castle of my heart, from the castle of my heart. There is a flag flown high from the castle of my heart, where the king is in residence there. So let it fly in the sky, let the whole world know, let the whole world know, let the whole world know. So let it fly in the sky, let the whole world know that the king is in residence there. All right, you got it? Yes. I've got two kids do hand motions. All right, yes. Maybe, maybe we should get hand out extra prizes for kids that do hand motions. Totally. Here, you stand on this side then. There you go. All right, so there you can. All right, you can catch the. I know. Yeah. All right, here we go. Oh, we got to move him to the other side because he can see you now. All right, here we go. There is a flag flown high from the castle of my heart, from the castle of my heart, from the castle of my heart. There is a flag flown high from the castle of my heart, for the king is in residence there. So let it fly in the sky, let the whole world know, let the whole world know, let the whole world know. So let it fly in the sky, let the whole world know that the king is in residence there. All right, that was good. All right, let's sing it one more time, and then we'll move on to the next one. Actually, we're going to talk about this one for just a second first, and then we'll move on to the next one. 
All right, here we go, one more time. There is a flag flown high from the castle of my heart, from the castle of my heart, from the castle of my heart. There is a flag flown high from the castle of my heart, for the king is in residence there. So let it fly in the sky, let the whole world know, let the whole world know, let the whole world know. So let it fly in the sky, let the whole world know that the king is in residence there. All right. All right. Can I hand it back to you for a second? Yeah. All right, good. All right, we're going to talk about that for just a second. Go and have a seat. So... What on earth does that mean? All right, so yes, it's a fun song. You say the same thing over and over and over again. We're going to talk for just a second. It actually has a lot more meaning than you really think. So tonight, during our lesson time, we were talking about heraldry. We were talking about coat of arms and coats of arms. So this is why that song is significant. This song is significant because when a king was in a location, if a king was on a ship, if a king was in a castle, if a king was just traveling and it had a, he had a pavilion set up, anywhere the king was, there was a very specific flag that would designate the presence of the king. And that flag would always be flown wherever he was. If he was staying at the, the dwelling of an, one of his lords or one of his barons or one of his uh, knights, they would have the flag of the person who owned the castle but on top of it, they would have the flag of the king to show the king is here. So we sing that song, the king is in residence there. So let it fly in the sky, let the whole world know that the king is in residence there. What we're saying with that song is it went the moment you accept Christ as your savior, the moment you do make the choice, I want to be on God's side, I want to be on the side of right, I want to be on the good guy's side, and you accept Christ as your savior then the Holy Spirit immediately comes to live inside of you. And when the Holy Spirit comes to live inside of you, you have God living in you. God has taken up residence in your body, in your life. And so saying, let it fly in the sky, let the whole world know, is that you are living in such a way, you are acting, you're speaking, you're behaving in such a way that the whole world can know God lives in me. And it should be obvious. It should be very obvious that God lives inside of you. I heard a story one time. I don't even know if it's true. I love telling it because it's a fun story. It may be true. It may not be true. It may just be something that could have happened. But there was a little boy that had just recently gotten saved, and he was working out with his dad in the garage. And he was talking to his dad about God. He said, Dad, my teacher said God is so big that he can hold all of the universe in his hand. Is that true? And his dad said, well, yeah, I figure it probably is true. And he said, but I, my teacher also told me that when I got saved, God started living inside of me. Is that true? And his dad said, yeah, that's true. That's true. He said, well, dad, I'm pretty small. And if God's that big, don't you think he might stick out a little bit? And his dad said, yes, son, he should stick out a little bit. Because it should. We shouldn't be trying to hide the fact that we're a Christian. We shouldn't be trying to hide the fact that we have trusted Christ as our Savior. We shouldn't be ashamed of it. We should be proclaiming it. We should be telling it. We should be letting other people know, hey, I'm a Christian. God lives inside of me. God is my king, and he is living in my heart, living in my life. So that is why we sing that song. That's why I picked that song because it talks about letting God be evident, letting God be obviously living in your life. All right, go ahead. We're going to sing our next song, which I believe is Sharpest Blade, correct? All right, cool. So, Miss Whitney, all right, we got prepared this time. All right. So we're, we're not going to learn this whole song tonight. So just as a heads up for you, Brother Caleb, we'll just work on the first verse and the chorus tonight. And there is a second verse and then the chorus again that we'll work on in the coming nights. So we, we, might, get, we might only do the first verse and chorus of this song tonight. We, I don't, we'll see how long it takes. But we might not get to the, the third song. Oh, yeah. So don't say the word sharpest blade. <laughs> All right. <laughs> 
He's going to make things fun. All right, here we go. So here's, here's how the song goes. I'm going to try to sing it for you without music, um, and you can help me, I guess. <laughs> Let's give it a shot first. If, if we completely flunk it, then I'll, I'll, I'll figure out a way to rig some music going at the same time. All right, here we go. From Genesis to Revelation, the Word of God is a sure foundation. It can separate the truth from a lie, so train your brain, buckle down and memorize. The Word of God is the sharpest blade, better than what any man has ever made. When the battle rages, I can overcome with a Word of God on the tip of my tongue. Got the Word of God on the tip of my tongue. All right, and actually, we're not going to do the O's, so. <laughs> Sorry. All right, all right. So, all right, yep, stand up. We're going to work on singing it together. Here we go. Are you ready? Are you ready? Yeah. All right, there we go. If you're watching live, stand up with us. <laughs> if you're watching live, stand up with us. I'll work on that. I'll work on trying to get the, 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 our live audience involved too. All right, so everybody standing up. We're going to sing this all together. Sharpest Blade. Here we go. From Genesis to Revelation, the Word of God is a sure foundation. It can separate a truth from a lie, so train your brain, buckle down and memorize. The Word of God is the sharpest blade, greater than what any man has ever made. In battle rages, I can overcome with the Word of God on the tip of my tongue. Got the Word of God on the tip of my tongue. All right, good. All right, let's just sing the chorus here for just a moment, all right? Because I think if we can get the chorus down, then we can, like, build some momentum and keep moving forward. So here we go. Back to, here we go. So here we go. The Word of God is the sharpest blade, better than what any man has ever made. In the battle rages, I can overcome with the Word of God on the tip of my tongue. Got the Word of God on the tip of my tongue again. The Word of God is the sharpest blade, better than what any man has ever made. When the battle rages, I can overcome with the Word of God on the tip of my tongue. Got the Word of God on the tip of my tongue. One more time. The Word of God is the sharpest blade, better than what any man has ever made. When the battle rages, I can overcome with the Word of God on the tip of my tongue. Got the Word of God on the tip of my tongue. All right, great job. Very good. All right, you can have a seat. Very good. Very good. Very good, yes. All right, good job. Very good. All right, so we are not going to work on memorizing. Miss Winnie, if I could actually have, still have you stay up here. We're going to go ahead and we're going to run over the first verse and chorus of that, that third song. We're not going to work on memorizing it all tonight, but I want you guys to go ahead and hear it. No, we always have fun here. That's right. We always have fun here. All right. <laughs> All right. Here we go. So this song is called Flaming Arrows and Fiery Darts. All right. You ready? What's that? Oh, gotcha. Here we go. Yes. Hmm? Yeah, that was Sunday school. All right. Here we go. There's an enemy that you cannot see hiding in the shadows when the doubts come round you can stand your ground take the shield of faith we completely like changed keys right there that was bad <laughs> all right i'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna find music for this one sorry i know this is killing live stuff 
Sorry. Here we go. It's good music, isn't it? It's great. You can hear that? What's that? Hold it up here. Okay. There we go. There's an enemy that you cannot see Hiding in the shadows When the doubts come round You can stand your ground Take the shield of faith So arm yourself with the shield of faith Cast your spear of down When the stress in God will protect your heart from flaming arrows and fiery darts. Great, I love it. With the faith that's out, you can conquer doubt. God supplies the armor, and the strength in Him, not the strength of men. Take the shield of faith. So arm yourself with the shield of faith, trust those fall of down, and your trust in God will protect your heart from flaming arrows and fiery darts. All right, so there we go. So that is the other song. We will start working on that one tomorrow night. But right now, you guys are heading on to your next rotation, which will be Snack. Everybody wave. Hi. Say hi, all. Hello. Hopefully yeah. we'll see you all soon. All right, so go ahead and head back. Follow Miss Tanya back by the kitchen. Hello. Take your Bibles, take your book bags, all that stuff. All right. Thank you all for watching. Enjoy craft time. All right, well, we're live, and we are here with you for craft time. Who's this lady that's with me tonight? Miss Shelby. And yeah. so <laughs> we're glad that she's here. Um, I was going to have my phone out so I could see who was watching. Let me get that going. I know that uh, Callan and Lily, hey, Callan and Lily. Hey. And I think the Whittles are watching as well. Ooh, hey, guys. So Abby and Nicholas and Nathaniel. I don't know if Nicholas will be watching, but maybe he is watching with us. Maybe. Who else is Who else is on? Let's see. Miss Twyla is on. What up, Twyla? Hey, Twyla. And so that's going to be fun too. Uh, Jenny Craig. I don't know if Brother Donald's still watching or not. But let's refresh this, and then we will go from there. Hmm. Miss Lewis. Yep. Are we live over here? Uh, yes. Yay, yes, crafts. Yay, Sweet, perhaps. So, Miss Carol's watching. Oh, John's watching. John says hi. Hey, John. Hey, John. How are you doing? Oh, I miss you. Glad you're with us tonight. Wayne is watching. He's <laughs> supposed to be doing something else, but now he's watching too. <laughs> he wants to see us. Yep. And so, uh, looks like fun. Um, you Yay. can comment back to us hi as well, and we will see that going. All right. So, okay. tonight, Miss Shelby, here is your craft yes. bag. We all, you should have picked right. up a craft bag. Even if you're an adult, you could come by and pick up a craft bag for Kingdom Chronicles. Uh, there are a few things. Remember to wear your mask, put on your mask, and then uh, just call me Bob. 
Uh, I'm a bi-artistist biblicist. And then Romans 3.23 is our verse for tonight. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All right, so you're going to get into your bag and you're going to find the Ziploc baggie that has the tongue depressors that are stuck together. All right, Miss Shelly, don't be eating the food. Do not eat the candy. That's Thursday mm-hmm. night's crap, and so you need to wait for that. I haven't had supper. I'm I know. Hungry. Well, there are snacks in here too, and as soon as we're done, uh, yes. we're gonna have a snack, and I will have to text Marcy to bring me a diet Dr Pepper. But right. that's for a little bit. Right now, we are doing crap. So if you have found your crap uh, tonight, we are doing a frame. This I'm gonna set this out here so Shelby knows what it looks like. Because I've got the artistic ability of a rock, and so Me too. there it is, and uh, <clears throat> that's what it's going to look like when we're finished. All right, okay. so let's open our Ziploc baggies. <laughs> I already opened mine. All right, you need to follow instructions. Uh, <laughs> we have a, a track in every in every one for your reading pleasure, and there are pictures in there too, so you will be able to understand that. Thank you. So that will be cool, the throwaway kid. Not really, but but that's what it's talking about. All right, dump your contents. Dump your contents. Ziploc baggie, back into your bag. Back into my bag. All right, so here's what we have. We have a large square. Mine is green. What color is, uh, what color is yours? Blue. Blue. Um, What does he want? What's he want? And now I have a blue one. <laughs> and Shelby has a green one. That's totally purple's fine. her favorite color. Yeah. So with this blue uh, square, we're going to put it with the sticky side up on the table. And that's how we will begin. All right. All right. We should have two tongue depressors or popsicle stick holders that are separate and two that are together like that that are hooked all right the tricky part of this whole thing is not getting shelby to listen to what i say but is getting the sticky part you want to shut that door yeah so you have to get the yellow sticky part and i don't have fingernails and i can't see very good so let's begin with that part um i may have to call for my mom um how was your day um so there's one right do not let them fold together because if it sticks you are done um is he saying stuff about you ethan is he's being rude see Uh, if i ever feed you any food (laughs) you will all right let's get them both off did you already get both of yours off all right yeah i even like let me win okay (laughs) All right, because okay. I am the artist. Okay. All right, so the the double one goes right along the side with your sticky stuff up like that. Yes. All right, so that's yes. how you begin. Oh, don't do what I did. Do not let it squeeze together. Yeah. They squeeze together. All right. Yeah. Then you're going to begin the work on your second one. And some of you already have this done. Get the stick out of your mouth. Callan, take the stick out of your mouth. All right. But Let's it's go. a popsicle It's going to go on the paper. <laughs> if you get this done, you can have your snack. Let's see here. Oh, there's one. All right. Be distracted. This is very artistic. Don't. You're very slow at Turn this. Turn them together. All right? And they will go on the east side or the right or if you're facing me in the camera, the left. But they go on the other side. Yes. All right. Very good. Very good. You're going to take your single sticks. Do you, do you need help? I'm letting you win artistically. Okay. You're going to take your other sticks and start getting that yellow backing off. Uh, We did this because sending Elmer's glue with everybody 
was not a good thing and I would probably end up with blue in my hair. So Who put all these together for us? Uh, Miss Linda Thomas, Miss Linda Baker, uh, Miss Jenny Palmer, Miss Barbara Ball, and I think Marsha is over there helping them tonight as well. Thanks guys. Yeah. These this is are, great. These are cool. All right, so there's one with the one, and if you have one with your sticks, you can leave yours laying down, but it's gonna go right across the top, such as so. You can look at that one, it's already finished. <laughs> so right across the top, because oh. we're making a frame, which is really cool, then you begin to work on the next one. Hey, is yours perfect? No. It's not perfect, nope. and that kind of makes me think about the verse that we have tonight, mm -hmm. that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You know, the we're doing this art stuff, but but the real purpose of life is to know God. And so, uh, in an artful way, or in God's expected way, he had Jesus die on a cross for us, which was made of wood too, just like this wood that we're doing here, because we're just, we're not perfect. And nope. uh, Our no, righteousness Caleb is thinks he's perfect. Filthy rags. Caleb thinks he's perfect. Yeah. But he's not perfect. No. So, <laughs> uh, but we're not perfect and we have come short. Just, it's right here. Not all the way. I can't read that. It's probably backwards. All right, so next. And mine's kind of set up for this picture frame or shield, multi-purpose, yes. <laughs> I like that, Twella. So you can take your sticky part, man, that was like, that was set up. <laughs> take the sticky part right off of right. the middle, and you will take your memory verse, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, and we will stick that right in the center or as best as we can. Oh, I should have switched my purple with the yellow. I didn't think about that. Man. But too late now. It's okay. This is citrusy. Lemon and lime. Yeah. What does yours look like? What colors are yours? Put your, in the comments, put the, put, make your parents put the colors of yours. All right. So what we should have left is this little uh, strip and it has a white coating on the back of it. So we want to flip our frame straight over and we are going to remove that white coating off of the back of it. Maybe. It's <laughs> highly sticky. All right, very good. Bob. And we're gonna take that on the back, right at the top on the paper. At the top. Yep, and stick it on our frame. I don't, I don't know if I have anything magnetic. I do have something magnetic. Oh, John's, yellow and red. Yellow and red. Look cool. at this. Um, please, it's not, because yeah. it's aluminum. It's not going to stick. Um, but I'll tell you where it will stick. It will stick on your refrigerator. Yeah, yeah. And so that's, that will be the purpose of that. This will be the first step, which we call partly uh, the Romans Road. Uh, yes. In the book of Romans is a, is a road that God has mapped out so we can know for sure that it, when we die that we can go to heaven and be with Jesus Christ. And, and the recognition of that or the starting point of that is to know that, that we're not perfect and we've come short of God's glory. Um, Becky says, Abby's paper is orange and her memory verse is blue. Oh, oh, so cool. Becky is on, Becky's on, but so is uh, Abby. Abby, yeah. So, hey, hey Abby. So, uh, you can take this, put on the refrigerator, yeah. and for the rest of the week, this is a good memory verse. Uh, before you're allowed to get any snack out of the refrigerator, you read this verse. And then open it. And just in a week's time, you would have this verse memorized. And so uh, we thank you for watching. Um, now is Callan's favorite part. He, snack. There are multiple snacks, but we're only going to do one tonight. Just one. So you got to pick. I've got this is hard. a Rice Krispie treat. Uh, I don't know. <gasps> assorted more. fruit. Uh, I thought cheesy there was only crunch. Two. Oh, Terry's. 
We all need one of those on our fridge. Yes, we yes, do. Yes, we do. And so Fritos and Cheetos and, and Oreos too. And so you can pick one of those and eat snacks. Uh, there are some, these are some extras that are in the bottom of here. Uh, one of the things that the oh, lady said we could do, hand me that um, bag. So one of the things, and you have to get your parents' permission to do that. Uh, I think these are dry erase, but you could take your frame and decorate it. Of course, I'm not going to use red for nothing. Nope, he doesn't want to be a Hoosier. But you can take your spoon. Oh, you got it. Yep. And you can decorate it. I'm going to put in blue. UK Wildcats, <laughs> and I'm going to put my name on one side. Oh, they're ready for snack time too. Amy says that, or one of the kids. We are, let's see. Tom and Lily have theirs done and they're ready for snack time. All right. Let's see if you can see, if I bring that up to the camera, you can see UK Wildcats, Alan Ball. I'm, I'm almost gonna, done and I'll show I'm gonna you. I'm put that on my fridge and when Marcy brings me my snack, I'm gonna make her read that every time. And so <laughs> that'll be good for her. So which snack are you gonna have? Okay. Why don't you comment to me and say which snack that you're gonna have? Uh, That's a hard decision. And the first person to comment if I have that snack, I'm gonna eat that snack with you. Ooh, and then the second person, I'll eat the snack with you. Whoever Let's see, we're snack. waiting. There is a delay. Um, so it's probably the same speed with Shelby, but it's a little bit behind. Marcia says, good job. Can they read this? Yep, if you Shelby? push it up there. Yep. Okay, so I'm going to push this up here, but this says, it may be backwards, but Jesus is the door, and then I put my last name, or my full name, Shelby Ball. But I remember um, we made something like this last VBS, and I still have it magnetized on my refrigerator, and it says in the center, Jesus is the door. And so... Made out of wood. That. Carrie Baker says Oreos. So <gasps> Oreos it is for me. Oh, Ralph is having ice cream. Um, Maybe you can go get me some. Well, there was no ice cream <laughs> and the snack options. Let's Elizabeth see, says John oh. is having chips. And so Are these considered chips? They're, yes. I'd say the Doritos the are Doritos. chips. The Doritos. Yep. So here's our snacks. And yes. uh, I have a quick announcement. All right, I'm jumping bags. in here. Oh Hi. no, the Lettinghams, they don't have goodie bags. Oh, we'll We're get gonna those have to them. get them to you. We're, they're coming, they're on their mm. way. All right, am I completely being thrown off by lighting and stuff here? No, I would. Okay. I'm sad that you don't have goodie bags, but I'm eating my Oreos, so I'm not sad. <laughs> well, I want to be sad. I'm sad, I'm sorry. What's your announcement, Rolo? So, on this piece of paper, in there, I have on the top, hear ye, hear ye. Um, come find out what's in the store for us today and hear how you can enter for each day's drawing. Mm. So we are going to have a drawing each day, um, but in order to enter into that drawing, in order to be drawn for that, you have to post a picture of your craft that you just learned how to do, that you just saw how to do. So every day as you learn how to do crafts right here in this room, uh, post a picture on Facebook or somewhere you know, better places. To nope, post it. Um, that's what I was going to ask. Where, where are they posting it? Um, post it to in the comment section of this video. All right, that will be good. So post it in the comment section of this video, and then tomorrow, before we get started with tomorrow night's VBS, we will do a drawing and find out who is the winner um, of the, the drawing prize. You cannot post it in the comments because you don't know how to do that, and I'm assuming there's going to be some. You can message them to Willis or I, and we will post them up as well. All right. Be sure and decorate your. Be sure and decorate it, and then be sure and stick it to the refrigerator. And have a blessed night. We've had a good time. We will see you tomorrow night at six thirty. Six thirty. Amen. Amen. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.